if there's any reason for you to come here, it is Diane from the dining hall. Sweetest woman on the face of the planet. Amazing. Deserves the whole world. You can always switch your major. Um, like I said, some some people even switch their major three, four times before they graduate. Do something that you know you're going to want to do for the rest of your life. But you will have the time of your life here. I almost guarantee it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new student-run podcast here at Brockport. Um, the name of it is Tour the Nest, and this is the first episode. So the first guest we have um, for this episode is my good friend, Michael Guido. Uh, as he said, my name is Mike Guido. I'm a RA in Gordon Hall, which is a freshman-only dorm. It's suite style instead of corridor. Um, I'm a junior here. I just changed my major to broadcasting and journalism. I did originally come here for phys ed, but changed my mind last semester. So that's something new and different. Uh, I'm from Cortland, New York. That's why I didn't go to SUNY Cortland. Why Brockport? Why did you decide to come to Brockport? So since I originally came here for phys ed, my two main choices were SUNY Cortland and Brockport. My parents were making me go to a state school since my brother went to a private school and it took him six years to get out and that's a lot of debt. So um, I kind of just wanted to get out of town. You know, I've been in Cortland my whole life, didn't really travel a ton. So I kind of wanted to branch out and meet new people and kind of have some level of independence from my parents. You know, I mean, they're only two and a half hours away. Yeah. So if I need to go home on a weekend, see them, it's not a big deal, but they're not like constantly there. Yeah. So coming to Brockport, you wanted to do phys ed. Did you know you wanted to do phys ed for like a while in high school or was it just one of those things where you're like looking at colleges and phys ed kind of was just interesting to you? So this is actually kind of a cool story. When I was in kindergarten, we hired a new PE teacher at the elementary school I went to. And from the time I was in kindergarten to sixth grade and he was fresh out of college, fresh out of SUNY Cortland, I kind of got to watch him grow as a teacher. Cause like he started off, he was like, I just said, fresh out of college. So he had like had no clue what he was doing. And he just like slowly started becoming better and better at teaching and getting better with kids. And I thought that was pretty cool. And then when I graduated sixth grade and moved to high school, he went to the high school too. So it was kind of just like cool watching me grow up and him grow up as a teacher. And that kind of made me want to be a PE teacher. Uh, both my parents are also teachers okay. and I kind of wanted to be a teacher too, but I, I can't sit in a classroom all day. That's, that gets way too boring. Um, I know you're a big sports guy. So Absolutely. Did, did that play a big role on PE or was that story pretty much it? Yeah, I'd say that also played a pretty big role because um, during high school, every time I had a study hall or lunch, I would go to PE class yeah. and play whatever game they were playing. Um, also with PE, you get a coaching certification with your degree and coaching is like the one big thing I want to do. If okay. I can do anything, it'd be coaching football. Yeah. But um, if you go for coaching, that's the only degree you get. And that field is super competitive. So you don't get a job. Then you got to go back to school or do, so do something else. So PE is kind of just like a safety blanket. But yeah, yeah. So if you could have any superpower, what superpower would you want to have? This is a very complex question. Okay. So unravel it. A lot of people would say super strength, right? Understandable. Or like be able to fly. I think I would say fly because you kind of get super strength built in with it. Okay, elaborate. So you think about it, right? If, if you just fly fast enough, you can push anything or like <laughs> lift anything. <laughs> You're kind of just pushing with enough force that you don't really need the muscles to do it just like your momentum is going to do all the work for you. Okay. So you kind of get super strength and flying built in with just flying. Okay. That's, I've never heard that answer before. I've also never been on a plane. So interesting. Just being in the sky would be kind of cool. Yeah. We'll do next set of questions. What was something you were scared about coming into college? Like as a, as a high school senior, what was something that you were worried about transferring from high school into college? So, I'm not an only child. I have an older brother and a younger sister, but I always had my own bedroom. Okay. So sharing a bedroom with somebody kind of scared me a lot. <laughs> the bathroom wasn't a huge deal because I had to share it with my siblings, but mm -hmm. like I, I just always had my own bedroom. I sleep with a TV on. Okay. So just like that kind of made me a little nervous, but mm -hmm. I definitely won the lottery of roommates oh, last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, definitely coming to college 
it's obviously a little bit scary. For me, I'm from a small town, an hour and a half south of Buffalo. I graduated with 38 students. So that's how small of a school um, I went to. So I, I saw the same people every day, talked to the same people every day, stuff like that. So in high school, being social wasn't that big of a problem because I knew everyone. Yeah. So uh, coming, up to, coming up to Brockport, not knowing anyone, uh, that was coming coming with me with my graduating class or anyone classes ahead of me. Um, you know, you kind of do have to put yourself out there in a, a little bit. Um, you know, if you want to stay in your room and just because you're scared of meeting new people and stuff like that, which is completely understandable because you're coming up to a college where there's tons of tons of different people. Um, but you do kind of have to put yourself out there. Uh, you know, if I wouldn't have gone to the LLC meeting, if I would have been like, that's, that's stupid going, going there. I wouldn't have met Mike. I wouldn't have met Tony. I wouldn't have met John. I would have met the friends that I have to this day. So it's kind of, you know, it's going to be awkward going out there, introducing yourself. You're going to say the same four things over and over. You're going to say your name, your major, where you're from and what you want to do with your life. Um, so you're going to be answering the same four questions, but it's really what you do outside of that is how you're going to make, make it feel like home. Uh, so that's, that's some advice I give to give to students. Um, I will say it's, if you look back to like when you were in pre-K kindergarten and you just go up to someone and say, hi, my name is Mike. We're going to be friends. Like that's literally just about how it works. If you just do that with enough people, you oh, will yeah. make friends. And there's, there's niches for everybody on campus. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's tons of different opportunities on campus and you're always, whatever college you go to, you're always going to find people who might not want to talk to you. And that's just kind of the person they are where they're, they're not social and they're not too worried about making friends. So you're always going to find those people who kind of like turn you down, but there's, there, I, I'll say there's more people out there who want to be friends with you than there aren't. So you're always going to, you're always going to find people. Definitely. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll kind of jump into a little bit about you being an RA and LLC, don't give too much information because we'll talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about it um, later on. But if you want to, you know, talk about the opportunities with LLCs um, now that you're now that you're working, you know, as an insider of the LLCs, coming up with the programs, coming up with different stuff for the LLCs um, to kind of give future students a little bit of a perspective on what LLCs are um, and just how much fun they are. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I don't know if you said it earlier, but LLCs are living learning communities. So they kind of just like group you together. You sign up for one and the people in your hallway or on your floor are going to have similar interests to you. Yeah. And your RA will too, most likely yeah. the person in charge of it. So mine is Reckon Fitness, which is the one we were in last year as students. Yeah. So kind of the programs I do, we took kids to an Amherst hockey game last semester. Um, this year we're doing a cornhole tournament during the Super Bowl. Okay. Um, yeah, I took them to a hockey game here earlier this semester. We got ice skating. We'll do volleyball tournaments, stuff like that. It's really just a chance for you to get out and meet people with similar interests to you. That's really cool. I will say like a couple of events, uh, my freshman year, our freshman year that we did in our LLC is they had Madden tournaments. So we would go to the common room and they would have Madden tournaments going on where you're playing each other. Like I said, we had lawn game days where we would just go out and play lawn games, stuff like that. So we have a ton of different LLCs, um, living learning communities here at Brockport. We have um, some that are major based. So if you know you're a nursing student, there's an LLC for nursing. If you're, you know, if you want to be a teacher, there's a teacher LLC trying to get those education majors um, living in the same area where, you know, if you have a couple classes together, you can study with each other. But then there's also a lot of interest based ones. So, you know, we have the rec and fitness, obviously. Um, so if you're interested in that stuff, there's also an LGBTQ um, LLC on campus. If you're with that, uh, there's also an environmental one. So if you're interested in, you know, the environment, I know the environmental one will actually go to like ponds and stuff off campus and do like nature stuff with it, um, is what I've been told. So there's a ton of different LLCs. Um, you don't have to be a part of one. If you decide to come to Brockport, it's optional. It's all up to you. Um, but just from our experience, they're great. Um, really helped like with the transition into college, finding those friends with Absolutely. the same interests as well. Um, so I always recommend LLCs cause I think they're great. Um, but yeah, so 
we'll move on to the first little like game segment. So I asked Michael here to bring five things that he can't live without. And he's going to, he's going to show them to us um, and explain why he can't live without them. All right. So first one got Burt's Bees chapstick. Okay. I, my lips are always chapped. It's windy and cold here mm -hmm. constantly. Yes. So cannot live without this. Indeed. It's the one my mom always used. So yeah, kind of okay. just gives me a little bit of a, a comfort thing. Understandable. Up next, we got Dr. Squatch Pine Tar Soap. Not a sponsor. This is my favorite scent. I put my dad onto this. Absolutely fantastic stuff. I don't know. It's all natural. I feel way more comfortable putting it on my body. And it smells great. It does smell pretty good. It smells absolutely fantastic. Smells really great way to start your day. Up next, got my Lucky Frank's Mustache Wax. Mustache is looking good today, by the I've way. Been, I've been growing my mustache out for about a year now. And it's just long enough that I can curl it. So need something to curl it with. Another thing I can't start my day without. As I'm seeing, it's a lot of, you know, care and beauty yes. products. Tide sticks. If you are a man, <laughs> you need to keep one of these on you at all times. Anybody should anyways, but specifically men because we are messy and we will get stuff on our clothes. And I don't think I've ever not gotten something out of my clothes with this. Interesting. I keep one in my room and in my backpack at all times. I've never had to use one. I will say that, but last but not least, <laughs> here it is. My lucky AJ Brown Jersey worn it during every game that the Eagles have won so far. I will say he did. He has washed it every week. Yeah. So it's not one of those things where you don't wash it and it's good luck. It's, it still smells good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Five um, things I cannot live without at the moment. I was going to swap out the mustache wax for Diane from the dining hall, but she, she couldn't make yeah, it. She, she was working come. right now. Understandable, so understandable. Diane is a national treasure. If there's any reason for you to come here, it is Diane from the dining hall. Sweetest woman on the face of the planet. Amazing. Deserves the whole world. Yeah. When you were thinking about colleges, when you were thinking about where you're going to apply, where you want to go, and you ended up choosing Brockport, um, what was, as a, as a high school senior, what was something you were excited about you know, getting to leave home and, you know, kind of, kind of come to college. I think my biggest thing was meeting new people. Cause I, like, I've just said, I didn't go to a high school as small as yours, yeah. but I mean, you go to school and see the same faces for 12 years. Yeah. I don't know. I just like the idea of branching out and meeting new people and making new connections and I, being an RA now helps that a lot, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll touch up on that then. Uh, what's it like being an RA, um, especially a freshman RA? So the only reason I'm a freshman RA, to be completely honest with you, and I kind of cheese the system, yeah. it has to do with the LLC. Certain LLCs are in certain buildings and the Reckon Fitness one is in Gordon. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's an RA in Gordon or Harmon gets their own living room and their own bathroom. Yeah. And I wanted my own living room and my own bathroom on top of my own bedroom. Understandable. So that's the biggest reason I was a freshman RA. Okay. But also I liked how our RAs last year handled us being freshmen yeah. and kind of helped us integrate into the college life. Yeah. And I liked the idea of being a part of that. So being able to have an impact on people who are just now like branching out and really becoming themselves yeah. is kind of a cool idea. So do you want to explain... Um, to people who might not know what an RA is, do you want to explain, you know, uh, first off what it is, but what you kind of do as an RA, as a freshman RA? So as an RA, a resident assistant, my job is to, you know, check up on my residents in my hall, make sure they're doing well academically, mentally, just like getting involved on campus. Um, I sit desks on weeknights and then sometimes on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So that's for like, if there's an incident, they come down to the office or call UP and then I'm there to handle it. So like, and then um, also to run programs. So getting students involved on campus, even if it's not like through my LLC, yeah. as an RA, we're required to have five programs a semester and three of them have to be active. Okay. So there's passive, pro passive programs and active programs. Passive ones would be like, if I set up a table in the building, with donuts and I was like, here, scan this QR code to check in, take a donut, have a good day. Okay. And then active ones would be like the LLC ones where it's a cornhole tournament or people are being involved. And like last year we did one where we wrote letters to people in nursing homes for the holidays or like letters to your future self for motivation, kind okay. of stuff like that. 
Cool, cool. So are, so you're enjoying it so far though? Oh, absolutely. I love it. I love my residents. That's they cool. all, they, they make me cinnamon rolls every time I'm on desk. Oh, wow. They'll That's get cool. me food. Yeah. Looking back at like tiny Guido, at Guido, you know, his freshman year in high school or even before that, uh, would you think he would think that you'd be in any of the positions and any of the things you've done so far? Did you ever think that you would want to be an RA or anything like that? So I actually talked to my parents about this on Sunday. They came up, they came up and saw me. Um, I did not expect to be an RA and my parents were like, of all of our children, you were the last one we expected to be taking a position of responsibility and stuff. No, I definitely like, I don't think if you'd asked me when I was in ninth grade that I'd be a journalism major, that's an RA. I would have told you you were crazy. I would, I would say the same thing. So um, I'm an exercise science major uh, and I've stuck with that so far through this one and a half year, um, years of being at Brockport. So I've stuck with it. Who knows? It's over, it's over like 50, 60% of college students change their major. So whatever you come into college with, don't think that necessarily is what you have to do. You can always switch your major. Mm -hmm. Um, Like I said, some, some people even switch their major three, four times before they graduate because, you know, you get, you get introduced to a ton of different stuff and different interests um, and all that. But um, so that's just something cool with college is that you like really, you can, you'll see a lot of personal, personal growth with it. um, And you'll find things that you might not have thought you would want to do. Um, going home and, you know, talking to old, old teachers, um, and telling them what I'm doing now, they're like high school Hunter is completely different from college Hunter. And it's, it's something, it's something cool to see, especially with like personal growth and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I will say the, one of the biggest things that I tell residents is don't pigeonhole yourself. Don't come into college and think this is what I have to do. I'm just going to grind it out. Even if I hate it, don't get a degree in something you don't want to do. It's a waste of money. Do something that you know you're going to want to do for the rest of your life. This will kind of go into the next section of the podcast. Um, So I don't like condiments. I eat everything plain. So catch me at the dining hall eating a burger. It's just cheese on my burger. No ketchup, mustard, anything like that. Hot dogs are plain. Ham sandwiches are plain, everything like that. Um, But that's going to jump us into our next section called dip the chip. Yeah. So it's a fun one. I'll explain more once I. All right. So I'm going to explain dip dip the chip to you. What kind of chip we dip in? Salt and vinegar, kettle cooked. Yes. Correct. Yeah. All right. So not a big fan of salt and vinegar chips, but I'm going to do it for the guest. Oh, so we have- You're lucky I didn't specify because if I like really went all the way, this is a real hot take. I like these and Cheetos stale as opposed Ooh. to regular. I will open the bag and leave them for a day before I eat them. Interesting. The way that this this little segment, this little game works is we're each going to take turns of spinning the wheel and whatever, whatever it lands on, that's what you got to dip the chip in. We're going to start it off. Do you want the first rock, paper, scissors for first spin? All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. All right. You can go first. All right. Again, shout out to Brockport student government for letting me borrow this. Okay. Catch up. It's a pretty tame one. I'll let, I'll let you put it however much you feel is necessary. Oh, Ooh, not the ketchup holder. Oh. You got to shake that John up. Sorry. Like I said, don't use condiments that much. So I don't know the... Don't know the technique behind it. All right. I will say I wasn't a ketchup kid. You weren't a ketchup kid? I was not a ketchup kid. Okay. So this isn't going to be heaven for me. I'm going to, I'm going to be nice to you because I'm hoping you'll be nice to me. Oh, I don't know about that. (laughs) Uh Oh, I mean, if you've ever put chips on a burger, that's about what that was. Okay. That was, that was pretty tame. Okay. So you'd give it a... I'd give it like a seven out of 10. Okay. I mean, I'd definitely just rather eat the chip plain, but... A little weak sauce. But. Ooh, that's the only one I actively don't want. Not a mustard guy. Makes your breath stink. Stop. You got yellow mustard too. You didn't even go tame with like honey or Dijon. I'll give you that much. Because okay. mustard's strong, dude. This stuff's pungent. <laughs> so I just down the hatch? Down the hatch. Just one bite. (laughs) 
Bro. <laughs> There's that bag. Hot sauce. Classic Tabasco. I'll let you do it. I think that should be enough. I wouldn't have put that much. I guess I didn't rate the mustard. As you can tell by my face, um, I would give it a solid like one out of 10. It was, I don't know how, how people do it. It's, it was terrible. Not going to lie. That kind of tasted like paint. <laughs> what kind of paint? Color, brand. Ooh. I don't know about brand, but it tasted red. Okay. Makes sense. Hot sauce. But like a really pale red. All right. So thank you for playing dip the chip. So we'll go into this last part and kind of, you know, any, anything you want to tell freshmen. So, you know, you're a freshman, freshman RA, but looking at students who are, you know, looking to come to Brockport as a high school senior, um, just some advice on what they, what they should expect coming into college, um, you know, whether stereotypes about college that aren't true, that maybe might be true, um, and any advice in general. There are so many things you can do here. So many different majors, opportunities, clubs you can join. Just do as much as you can without burning yourself out. And like, especially the more things you join, the less likely you are to get burnt out. Because I know specifically for me, just like by the time high school was over with, I was so academically burnt out, just mm -hmm. like I needed something new, something fresh. And that kind of happened to me last semester. That's part of the reason I changed my major Okay, is because now I'm in new classes. It's fresh. Yeah. It's something different. It's keeping me interested. Mm -hmm. Would you say that switching your major was like a big, like a tough decision? Because I know there's a lot of students who are like, well, I came in to college with thinking of this major. And I'm too scared to change it. Was it something that you were like, I'm too scared to change it because you don't know what will come out of it? Or was it just, was it an easy decision for you? I wouldn't say it was an easy decision. The thing I was most worried about was it affecting my graduation date. And thankfully it didn't. It's a little scary, yeah. but. What are like the most similar, like similarities you see between all the freshmen you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis? Is there a ton of stuff that they do that's the same that you've noticed? Um, or is everyone just completely different? Does that question make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, obviously everybody like pretty quickly finds their like group of people yeah. and sticks to them. Mm -hmm. So like within the first week I started seeing residents, like the same group of residents going everywhere together. Yeah. And like, it's great that they found their people. But then as the semester goes on, you see like more and more differences yeah. jump in. It's because people like at the beginning, they find their, it's like a safety blanket. Yeah. Like, okay, I know you, I know we're friends. I'm just going to like, we're going to stick together and that's just how it's going to be. But then like, as time goes on, you like meet more people, try new things. Um, definitely more and more kids, like as time goes on, start asking about club sports, intramurals, yeah. other clubs on campus, get involved, yeah. get involved in those. Um, intramural sports, some of the most fun things you can oh do on gosh. campus. Literally so much Very, fun. very small time commitment, if yeah. any. You just show up the one or two one, nights a week yeah, I was gonna say and have fun with some friends. Yeah. Um, any any sport you want to try out here, if you don't want to play college level sports, there's, you know, all the basics for, you know, intramurals. You have basketball, you have flag football, there's, you know, soccer, there's baseball, softball, there's rugby is a big one here if you're interested in playing rugby. You um, name it, we've probably got it. There's a ping pong league. So there's, there's a ton of different stuff going on. Um, but for me in high school, didn't play football. And coming up here, you playing football in high school, John yeah. playing football in high school. Um, they wanted to get a team together. And I just said, you know, why not? It's going to be fun. I mean, other than that, just obviously it's going to be a little scary at first for some people, but but you will have the time of your life here. I almost guarantee it. Yeah. So that's going to conclude this first episode of Tour of the Nest podcast. Um, thank you for coming on, Guido. Thanks for having really me. Really appreciate it. You've been great. Best friend right there. Um, so follow us. Um, really appreciate it. And see ya. Thank you.